Graham Pease to Carlisle gone with Sir Robert Berwick there met he. In arms to the wine they gone and drank till they were both merry. Old Graham he took up the cup and said, Brother Berwick, here's to thee. And here's to our two sons at home, for they live best in our country. They were thy son as good as mine, and of some books he could but read. With sword and buckler by his side to see how he could save his head. They might have been called two bold brethren wherever they did go or ride. They might have been called two bold brethren, they might have cracked the board aside. Thy son is bad and is but a lad, and bully to my son cannot be. For my son Bewick can write and read, and sure I am that cannot he. I put him to school, but he would not learn. I bought him books, but he would not read. But my blessing he shall never have, till I see how his hand can save his head. Old Graham called for an account, and he asked what was for to pay. There he paid a crown, so it went round, which was all for good wine and hay. Old Graham is into the stable gone, where still thirty good steeds and three. He's taken his own steed by the head, and home rode he right wantonly. When he came home there did he espy a loving sight to spy or see. There did he spy his own three sons, young Christy Graham foremost was he. There did he spy his own three sons, young Christy Graham foremost was he. Father, where have you been all day that no counsel you would take by me? Nay, I have been in Carlisle town where Sir Robert Berry there met me. He said thou was bad and called thee a lad and a baffled man by thou I be. He said thou was bad and called thee a lad and bully to his son cannot be. For his son Bowie can write and read and sure I am that cannot thee. I put thee to school but thou would not learn. I bought thee books but thou would not read. But my blessing thou shall never have till I see with Bowie thou can save thy head. Pray forbear, my father dear, that ever such a thing should be. Shall I venture my body in field to fight with a man that's faith and troth to me? What's that thou sayest, thou limaloon? How dare thou stand to speak to me? If thou do not end this quarrel soon, here's my glove, thou shalt fight me. Christy stooped low unto the ground, under the ground you'll understand. Oh, Father, put on your glove again, the wind hath blown it from your hand. What's that thou sayest, thou limaloon? How dare thou stand to speak to me? If thou do not end this quarrel soon, here's my hand, thou shalt fight me. Christy Graham is to his chamber gone, and for to study as well might be. Whether to fight with his father dear, or with his bully Bowick he. If it be my fortune my bully to kill, as you shall boldly understand. In every town that I ride through, they'll say there rides a brotherless man. Nay, for to kill my bully dear, I think it will be a deadly sin. And for to kill my father dear, the blessing of heaven I ne'er shall win. Oh, give me your blessing, father, he said, and pray well for me to thrive. If it be my fortune, my bully to kill, I swear I'll ne'er come home alive. He put on his back a good plate jack, and on his head a cap of steel. With sword and a buckler by his side, yet he did not become them well. Oh, fare thee well, my father dear, and fare thee well, thou Carlisle town. If it be my fortune, my bully to kill, I swear I'll ne'er eat bread again. Now we'll leave talking of Christy Graham, and talk of him again be live. But we will talk of Bonnie Bowie, where he was teaching his scholars five. Now when he had learned them well to fence, to handle their swords without any doubt, 
He's taken his own sword under his arm and walked his father's close about. He looked between him and the sun to see what follies he could see. There he spied a man with armour on as he came riding over the lee. I wonder much what man yon be that so boldly this way has come. I think it is my nighest friend, I think it is my bully Graham. Oh, welcome, welcome, Bully Graham. Oh, man, thou art my dear, welcome. Oh, man, thou art my dear, welcome, for I love thee best in Christendom. Away, away, O oh, Bully Perrick, and of thy bully ship let me be. The day has come I never thought on, Bully, I'm here to fight with thee. Oh, no, not so, O oh, Bully Graham, that e'er such a word should spoken be. I was thy master, thou was my scholar, so well as I have learned thee. My father, he was in Carlisle town, where thy father Bewick there met he. He said I was bad, and he called me a lad, and a baffled man by thou I be. Away, away, O oh bully Graham, and of all that talk, man, let us be. We'll take three men of either side to see if we can make our fathers agree. Away, away, O oh bully Berwick, and of thy bully ship let me be. But if thou be a man, as I trow thou art, come over this ditch and fight with me. Oh no, not so, my bully Graham, for ere such a word should spoken be. Shall I venture my body in field to fight with a man that's faith and troth to me? Away, away, O oh bully Berwick, and of all that care, man, let us be. If thou be a man as I trow thou art, come over this ditch and fight with me. If it be my fortune thee, Graham, to kill, as God's will, man, it all must be. But if it be my fortune thee, Graham, to kill, tis home again, I'll never go. Thou art of my mind, then, bully Berwick, and sworn brethren will we be. If thou be a man as I trow thou art, come over this ditch and fight with me. He flang his cloak from off of his shoulders, his psalm book out of his hand flang he. He clasped his hand upon the hedge, and o'er it leapt right wantonly. When Graham did see his bully come, the salt tear stood long in his ee. Now must I say thou art a man that dare venture to fight with me. Now I have a harness on my back, I know that thou hath none on thine. But as little as thou hast on my back, sure as little shall be on mine. He flang his jack from off of his back, his steel cap from his head flang he. He's taken his sword into his hand, he's tied his horse unto a tree. Now they fell to it with two broad swords, for two long hours fought Berwick and he. Much sweat was to be seen on both, but never a drop of blood to see. Now Graham gave Berwick an awkward stroke, an awkward stroke, surely he struck he. He struck him under the left breast now, then down to the ground as dead fell he. Arise, arise, O oh bully Berwick, arise and speak three words to me. Whether this be thy deadly wound, or God and good surgeons will mend thee. O oh, horse, O oh, horse, O oh bully Graham, and pray do get thee far from me. Thy sword is sharp, it's wounded my heart, and so no further can I gain. O oh, horse, O oh, horse, O oh bully Graham, and get thee far from me with speed. And get thee out of this country quite, that none may know who's done this deed. If this be true, my bully dear, the words that thou dost tell to me. The vow I made and the vow I'll keep, I swear I'll be the first to thee. Then he stuck his sword in a moony hill, where he leapt thirty foot and three. First he bequeathed his soul to God, and upon his own sword point leapt he. Now Graham he was the first that died, and then came Robin Berwick to see. Arise, arise, O son, he said, for I see thou's won the victory. Arise, arise, O son, he said, for I see thou's won the victory. Father, could you not drunk your wine at home, 
and let me and my brother be. They dig a grave both low and wide, and in it us two pray bury. Bury my bully Graham on the sun side, for I'm sure he's won the victory. Now we'll leave talking of these two brethren in Carlisle town where they lie slain, and talk of these two good old men where they were making a pitiful moan. With that bespoke now Robin Bowie, go man, was I not much to blame? I have lost one of the liveliest lads that ever was bred unto my name. With that bespoke my good Lord Graham, oh man, I've lost a better block. I've lost my comfort and my joy, I've lost my key, I've lost my lock. Had I gone through all Latterdale, and forty horse had set on me. Had Christy Graham been at my back so well as he would guard at me. I have no more of my song to sing, but two or three words to you I'll name. But twill be talked in Carlisle town that these two old men were all the blame.